warning before we start, there's going to be excessive amounts of man sweat in this video because I just turned my fan off and closed my windows, so there wouldn't be any background noise interrupting you amazing folks. This is the kind of love I put into my videos, and I hope you appreciate it. My darlings, how's it going? My name is Craig, and this is going to be my top 5 underrated equipped spell cards in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Right off the bat, I knew I had to have one certain card in this video. I knew my number one choice, without a doubt. However, looking through every single equipped spell card in the game as extensively as I could, there are some really surprising choices that I managed to come up with, and uh, hopefully you guys can find some new and cool interesting stuff that you might run in some decks as fun little tech cards. But anyway, without further ado... Coming in at number 5, we have Nef Shadow Fusion. I think I'm saying that right. I think it's just Nef. Anyway, it's an equipped spell card, and you can only equip it to a Shadow Monster. You activate it by declaring an attribute, and the equipped monster becomes that attribute. Then during your main phase, you can Fusion Summon using monsters from your hand or on your side of the field, including the equipped monster. That is amazing. That, that right there gives you access to every single Shadow fusion, apart from Construct, because BAM! FUCKING BAN HAMMER! BOOM! Although Konami, you really didn't need to get that harsh with the ban hammer. Construct wasn't that bad. It was annoying, but it wasn't that bad. Now after Construct got banned and people started to look at the utility of other Shadow Fusion monsters, this card did see a lot more play and a lot more people started picking it up and appreciating it, but right from the get-go, I've only played Shadows a little bit by the way, mind you, but I did have the deck at some point and I did like the deck, I just wasn't quite for me, but I appreciated the utility of this card right away. I think it's a really fun card, it allows for a lot of unique twists and turns within the games that uh, just playing a standard Shadow build would have without the card, especially since most decks aren't really going to play the border or wind or most other attributes besides light, darks, and earths. It genuinely allows for that unique twist to your Shadow deck, and I suggest if you run Shadows, maybe stop the wind to spam and try something else. Coming in at number 4, we have Takasho of Ghost Destroying. Uh, basically, the artwork for this card, by the way, is really cool. It's like the little beads that uh, Kaiku is carrying. I think it looks badass as hell. And it's basically a very basic equipped spell. And the equipped monster, whenever it deals battle damage to your opponent, you can target up to two monsters in their graveyard and banish their assets. Personally, when I look at equipped spells like this, I, I'm a huge, huge player and fan of Bujins. I just think, Susanoa, 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 oh my god! Imagine equipping this shit to Susanoa, your opponent has 3-4 monsters, they rely heavily on the graveyard, you just go, attack, 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 BANISH ALL YOUR SHIT! That would be fucking amazing. Outside of that, it might not be seen as being too great, because you might as well play a Kaiku that has more utility, because it stops your opponent from banishing shit. But for me, because I'm such a big Bujin player, just the fact that this card has amazing utility with Susanoa, Right there, clicks with me. This is my definite number four, and I think if you play Bujins, give it a shot. It's a really fun card. Coming in at number three is another card that has amazing utility with Susanello. That is Cursed Armaments. You can equip it to any monster on the field, but you're going to want to equip it to one of your opponent's monsters because the effect of this card is just going to shit all over their day. The equipped monster loses 600... I don't know why I did that, but I'm adding dramatic flair to the video. It loses 600 attack points for each monster you control. Right off the bat, that's really cool because if you have two or three monsters, that's taken, you know, 12 or 1800 points right off of whatever big beater your opponent might have. However, that's not all. Cursed Armaments, when it is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can target one monster your opponent controls and equip it to that target. That isn't a once per turn thing either, that's just when it's sent from the field to the graveyard. So again, if I have Susanoa on the board, and I have just you know, another monster on top of that, or even if I just have a Susanoa, I can have Honest or Cranes or whatever, I can equip Cursed Armaments to one of your monsters, attack with Susanoa, blow that monster out of the water, 
that uh, cursed armaments kills the grave, equip to another one of your monsters, and just constantly wipe out all of your monsters, doing a buttload more damage in the process because you're losing 6, 12, 18, or however much attack from the cursed armaments on every single monster. However, even if you don't run a booting deck, by the way, even if you can just throw out a bunch of monsters, even if they're not very strong, if you pen summon 5, that's, let me do math real quick, um, that's 6, 12, 18, 24, 3k. That's 3,000 attack points your opponent is going to be losing on the monster equipped with it. So just attack over it with anything at that point. Cursed Armaments goes to grave, equip it to another monster, and do the same repeatedly. It just fixes a board, because attacking over things is just an incredibly effective way to get rid of monsters nowadays. People really underestimate that. Um, a lot of the time, solving issues is as easy as just attack over something. Anyway, that's my number three. Moving on to number two. Coming in at number two, we have Silverwing. Now, Silverwing states that you can only equip it to a level eight or higher Dragon-type Synchro monster, um, up to twice per turn. If it would be destroyed by battle, it's not. And if the equipped monster would be destroyed by card effect, you can destroy Silverwing instead. If you equip this thing to something like a Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, your opponent's gonna have a really fucking hard time. Let's say you have something else like, I don't know, uh, let's say you're playing kind of a, a Void Ogre Shutdown type deck, maybe you're running an old school zombie deck, um, or maybe you're just running a zombie deck that doesn't spam Omega. I'm looking at every single current zombie player. Stop spamming Omega. I can do it, but you can't. Stop it. Bad. So if you're making a Void Ogre Dragon instead of spamming Omega, you can equip this to it, and hey presto, right there you have protection. If someone tries to Raigeki debate you, it won't work anymore. This is the underrated list right here. This is a card that I think has just been completely overlooked, never really played that much, and I think it needs to be given a shot. There's still a lot of great utility for it in today's game. Coming on to number one. Fucking UA Power Jersey. How can it not be? This card is dumb, it needs to burn in hell, but I fucking love it. You know what? I'm gonna make love to it right now. Where is it? Where is it? I'm gonna go fuck this. Oh! Oh! I'm, uh, I'm gonna have to pick all that up in a minute. I immediately regret this decision. But I can see some empty sleeves, some cards probably came up there. That sucks. UA Power Jersey, you can only equip it to a UA monster, it gains a thousand attack and defense. If it inflicts battle damage to your opponent, that damage is doubled, and if it destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can activate the effect of Power Jersey to get a second attack during that battle phase. The fuck? If you equip something like this to a Dreadnought Dunker, forget about it. Your opponent can't even quiver behind a set monster. It's just piercing damage, double piercing damage, Blow up your shit with Dreadnought Dunker's effect, I get another attack, and if you have another set monster, well fuck me, that's basically game. More piercing damage, or if you don't, I just do regular damage, and I get to blow up another card because of Dreadnought Dunker's effect again. That's insane! This card is absolutely ridiculous, it never should have been released. It's not really gonna make an impact on today's game because no one plays UAs but me. Which is weird, because when the deck got this kind of support to start- What's that? Was this Doors Alliance? No, this was New Challengers. It was set off the Doors Alliance. When this came out in New Challengers, along with a couple other things, people were playing UAs everywhere. That's why I built the deck, because I thought it was the most broken thing in the world at the time. And then the deck just disappeared. No one played it. And I never forgot this fucking card, and I never will. It's absolutely ridiculous. Now, it does have a bad side, but it's not really much of a bad side. During your standby phase, the equipped monster is banished. But if you know how UAs play, that's just not gonna happen. You're gonna return the monster this is equipped to, to your hand, from one of the defenders, like an ace, or a goalkeeper, or a block backer. By the way, on top of every goddamn OP effect you just heard from this thing, if the equipped monster is returned to the hand, this can be added from your graveyard back to your hand. How the fuck is that fair? It's not. It's ridiculous. I will never forget this fucking card. I absolutely adore it. Anyway. That has been my top 5 underrated equipped spell cards in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Thanks for watching, hope you appreciate it, I really hope you appreciate what I do for you because I am dying. Fuck, it is hot in here. I'm gonna go turn my fan on, open my windows back up. If you like this video, please share it with your friends because I'm trying to expand my channel. I'm gonna try and introduce a lot more videos um, at a more consistent pace. 
Thanks for watching, I really do appreciate it. If you have any thoughts or any equipped spells you think I missed out, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Take care and door. That was close, right?